quick. Visualize Abraham Lincoln in your head. Well, bro, I feel like he looks like Abraham Lincoln a little bit. Like, I don't even have to. I would just visualize him with it. This is called why politicians don't have beards. And I feel like this is a personal attack on me. Um, because you know, as we all know, I am, the, I will be president of the entire world, not even just America. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to become the president of the United States and then I'm going to conquer the world to fight a foreign alien threat on Mars. And I will be the best, most benevolent dictator ever. But then what will end up happening is that like my children will grow up, uh, with an easier life being then without the same life experiences. And so they'll run the country and the world into the ground. And after a couple generations, we'll live in a very oppressed society that, but that's going off the rails. I'm curious about this video though. Why politicians don't have beards. Go on, do it. I'm serious. Visualize Abraham Lincoln in your head. I'm thinking about Abraham Lincoln naked now because he's just like he's just being he's being way too coercive about it and it's making me uncomfortable. Did you do it? Well, odds are you probably visualized an Abraham Lincoln with a beard. Am I right? The crazy thing is, of his 56 years alive, Lincoln only wore a beard four and a half of those years. It's believed he was influenced to grow a beard. Was that when he was president, though? Because that would make sense as to why people would look at, like, yeah, he had a beard because he was a fucking president had a beard. And after an 11-year-old wrote him a letter requesting Trust me, him to... won't regret watching JT. I... Do right. so to cover his thin face. So it wasn't until shortly after Lincoln was elected president in late 1860 that Lincoln grew a beard. Well, that makes sense then. He's like, yeah, you know, Lincoln didn't really have a beard until he became president. It's like, okay, then what? That's why I would fucking expect him. To, I would think about him with a beard. I don't understand. He became the first president to have one. And that's the iconic image nice. of Lincoln nearly all of us have of him today. There have been a total of 16 American presidents who have had some kind of facial hair while in office, but that includes sideburns. Does that really count as facial Why the fuck would you include those? Facial hair? Man, <coughs> I must be a facial hair freak. There have been eight presidents who had a mustache while in office, but only five, Lincoln, James Garfield, Ulysses Grant, Benjamin Harrison, and Rutherford Hayes, who had a full beard. Sorry, huh? Chester Arthur. You came close from the 1860s through the 1890s. It seemed like if you didn't have a beard, you probably wouldn't get elected to public office. Here's a picture of the 43rd United States Congress, which met from 1873 to 1875. Okay. Look at all those beards. Here's a wow. picture of the 1880 Republican National Convention. Look at all those beards. My goodness. I, I can't Here's tell. Here's a picture of the United States Senate Is he today. being sarcastic? He's not being sarcastic. Hardly any beards. Well, I do get why the women don't have them. That makes sense. Okay. No. <laughs> this video is a little old. I'll give him a pass. But that's transphobic, brother. Okay? Women can have beards and penises and sperm. According to my calculations, only 30 of the current 433 members of the United States House of Representatives you know have this? facial hair. Why does These he know 18 this? 18 congressmen sport a mustache. <laughs> These eight congressmen sport a goatee. How did he even figure this information out? This guy is insane. And here are the only four people in both houses of Congress who have beards. Of the 100 members of the Senate, only two, just two, senators sport a mustache. These, ladies and gentlemen, are true rebels. Which brings me to the question. Why, why don't, don't politicians, politicians today, today grow, grow beards? beards? I'm Mr. Beats. And why did beards have any sort of prestige during that short while in the 1800s? Well, throughout history, growing a beard has gone in and out of fashion for various reasons. In the 1850s, however, beards dramatically came back into style after a long period of what them not the being music? so stylish. It began in Great Britain. One reason why beards became popular again was because they became linked with the stereotypical Victorian images of masculinity and male courage. He's right. People with beards are more masculine and more courageous because you want they have more testosterone coursing through their powerful veins i don't think testosterone courses through your veins but you understand the point maybe it does i don't know where if testosterone it's in my balls i'll tell you i have a lot in there between the it also makes you bald 
Late 1840s to mid 1860s, several British pamphlets and books warned of the dangers of shaving and advocated the growing of facial hair. Some argued that shaving just took too much time. Others argued that shaving it's super was too lazy. dangerous and that most Although this was back in the day, so I guess it would take a lot of time cuz like now you got your fucking, you know, you got like a razor, you just put it on your face, you're done. It's not really particularly dangerous simply could not but. be trusted. Back then, some people went to the barber every single day for a shave. I couldn't imagine going to Great Clips every day, but I digress. Some argued that shaving was unnatural and insulted God. They said if men had been created in God's image, shaving therefore defiled this image. Others argued that there were great health benefits from growing facial hair. They said a thick mustache would act as an extra filter of bad air as men breathed in through their nose. You know, like nose hair extra helper. I feel like if anything, you'd have like shit get caught in there and make it worse. They said a it's like breathing into a mask and never cleaning it. Beard kept the neck warm and that shaving would increase the risk of bronchitis, laryngitis, cancer, and even blindness. Even others argue that beards made men look like they had wisdom, confidence, and authority. Looking at old pictures of Civil War soldiers, you probably notice a lot. I have, a, I am very wisdom. A lot of beards. Well, steel that was usually used for razors was instead needed for military supplies. Also, due to unclean shape. Wait a minute. So the so wait, we had all these theories about why you shouldn't shave, but we figured out the real thing is that the government perpetuated. Um, these this they, they ran a misinformation propaganda campaign to get people to not use razors so that they could repurpose the steel so that they could use it for war dude bro dude how do we not fucking figure this out sooner shaving conditions near the battlefield many it's crazy who did shave risked infection yeah, by doing so and then there's abe lincoln think about based it. on my research he likely influenced many fellow republican politicians to grow beards like he did it's like one day I looked around and everyone, I mean everyone, was walking around with Beats by Dre headphones on, despite the fact that I think they are a ridiculous waste of money. I agree. I, I like this guy a lot. Chris. So around the end of the 1800s, beards began to go out of style again, and there were two related reasons for this. First, in 1904, King Camp Gillette patented a razor that was safe, cheap, and had a disposable blade. With the help of great marketing, the razors sold extremely well well hey the, the fucking wonders of capitalism most people could now shave from home second when world war one broke out the u.s army required that all of its soldiers be clean shaven in order for gas masks to fit properly that some makes sense. argued it was also safety hazards because beards caused the rapid spread of lice he's probably not wrong probably has a factor just shave everything at that point like Either way, you might say King Camp Gillette was a lucky man because he was awarded a contract to supply all of the troops in World War I with his safety razors. When the American soldiers returned home after the war with their clean-shaven faces, they were heroes. They appeared in newsreels and movies all over. Nice. And this, combined with Gillette's ad campaigns, helped make it fashionable to be clean-shaven. With this change came a change in perception. Clean-shaven men were seen as nice, law-abiding, and responsible, while being it's true. I'm none of those things. Bearded men were seen as lazy or rebellious. Sh sure, I guess. These stereotypes were not helped by the fact that during the Cold War, beards became associated with communism. And during the counterculture movements of the 1960s, beards became associated with hippies. I'm going to assume it's because like the America, at least with the hippies, I don't know about those communist fucks, but I'm assuming that hippies wore their hair like uh, long and stupid because... You know, that was like a protest of the military that was very clean shaven. You know what I mean? They just want to be like, hey, a lot of people who come home from the military, they'll grow their facial hair out. as like a, you know, it's like, ah, I was, I hated not being able to do this for a while. Understandably, American politicians wanted to distance themselves from such stereotypes in order to appeal to the mainstream. But that just explains American politicians. Nearly every politician in the Western world is currently clean shaven. Just look at how few beards are present at this United Nations meeting. It's too many women or we'd have more beards. Am I right, guys? get women out of office. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest reason why the United States won't have a bearded president anytime soon is because most American men don't have beards. It's estimated that about 10% of American men have a beard or mustache, so they are a fairly small minority. I didn't know I was oppressed. <laughs> well, now I know I'm a minority, so that's cool.
However, it is crazy to think that the last president to have more than just sideburns, sorry Jimmy and Gerald, was William Howard Taft, who left office more than 100 years ago. I think we're about... He created the, um, the, the Laffy Tafty. It's pretty good. I enjoy it every so often. I do. I'll end this video by bringing up the bearded entrepreneurs for the advancement of a responsible democracy. No, I am not joking. They are a real organization. I'll put their link below this video. Maybe I'll have anyway, to join them. The group recently launched a political action committee in order to support political candidates with, quote, a full beard and a... It apparently didn't work very well because the site is gone savvy mind full of growth oriented policy positions Shit. that will move our great nation towards a more lush and magnificent future so if you have a beard or you're thinking about growing one oh and you're thinking about running for office they've got your back when do you think the citizens of the united states will next elect a bearded president i think you should turn the music up because i can't hear it uh I, is this like a common trope of like six years ago to just fucking put a ton of like who reads this am i just a fucking idiot this guy's a lot of it this guy's interesting comment below this guy is abraham lincoln which year you think that will be and now i have to go shave thank you for that video i'm not going to take it offensively but i'm pretty sure you sent that to me as like a fuck you because you guys are always making fun of me